I'm one of the Foxes. Uh, I'm a first degree black belt under Fox. Fox is feeling underneath under the weather, so I'm here to fill a spot. So start asking questions. The first thing that we're going to start off with is we posted a short of Fox doing the shoulder bar. A question that was asked was, what are the finishing mechanics for the shoulder bar? So the entry that Fox showed was from Udi Gatami. I'm going to show one entry from side control. So here we have our opponent's side control. What I like to do from here first is clear the arm. So there's a few ways to clear the arm. You can pull up on the same side, bring your knees together and clear. Or you can pull up on the elbow and sit through. And once you sit through, so scissor your legs back, and now you have the arm by your head. So one setup is to pin the arm and go for a triangle. A lot of times, if you can get the triangle, by all means, lock up the triangle here and finish. But a lot of times as you pin and you step over, as you're going to clear, they're going to block the leg. They're going to guide the leg over. All you have to do is just sit to that hip, bring your knee up, and now you're in the position for the shoulder bar. You already have the, the armpit grip here. So the finish hand is almost like you're running. This top leg is stomping him down. This bottom leg is almost pinching upwards. As side crunch. So the top leg is very important because if I try to lean back for a regular finish, he's just going to come up. And now he just traded positions. So like I said, the finishing position without a partner is pinching. I like to think of the armpit grip. Almost like you're holding a tray. And as far as your legs, this leg is stomping, stomping down, and this leg is coming towards you. So I'll do it two more times. So again here, I sit through, load the arm up on my hip, scoop the head, I pin, and I'm going for my triangle from side control. As I go, he catches, he blocks. I'm not waiting for I'm not waiting for him to guide my leg all the way through. I'm going to keep my hip heavy. Pinch. My feet are flat. And now from here I have my armpit grip, almost like I'm holding a tray. This arm, nothing specific. I'm just keeping it on top of my partner. And now I'm doing that running motion. Staying heavy on this leg, bringing this knee towards me. Let's turn a little bit this way. So, one last time, I'll do the other way to guide the arm. Knees together, and I clear. I scoop up the head, pin, I lean, I look to guide the leg over. As you're guiding this leg over, make sure you don't extend towards this leg so you have to worry about deep path. So, I just keep my leg a little bent, guide through. I'm going for the triangle, but he starts to guide. I stay heavy on this hip to slow him down. Sit. This knee comes up. Foot flat, foot flat. I have my armpit grip. And now I go to finish. I don't look to grab my knee too much because it flares my elbow out. Just think about it like you're holding a tray and you have to finish. All right. We also decided with me to fill the, the spot for Fox because... This is also my last episode, so I won't be able to do any filming or be, or be the uke. I'm going to be actually driving down right after this to go to Austin, Texas. So, a little pow to finish, you know? Uh, so, one of the guys asked, what do you, what's your plan if you do get caught in half? In deep half? Uh, he just said half. Where's the deep half? Yeah, I think when he's saying basically when you're trying to step over. Okay, so... So I clear. Yeah, he just says half guard. He didn't say deep half. Okay, so as I step, he catches me. The first thing I'm looking to do, and this way, is always hide this leg. Because if you leave this leg dangling, then they're going to look to start to get a scorpion on you. And you're already in a stretched out position for you have to start worrying about the sweep. So I clear. Scoop, pin. Let's say you do kick out wide, he catches. 
bring your heel to your butt right away so you get to avoid the scorpion. Next thing I'm looking to do here, turn, is start to misalign. You got head control, drive your shoulder across. I like to bring my elbow towards my hip and cup his hip. Now I'm almost gonna use my forearm as a frame against his thigh, because now I get to use my elbow to free my knee and start to pass across. Here, I have a frame to start to guide my knee through, and now start to drive. If your foot is caught, uh, pinch your knees together. No big deal, the best way to free this is to just get him looking the other way, and you get to free your leg, or start threatening the upper body. Once his attention changes, He's not going to be holding on to your foot as much. So one last time. So turn here. So we're going for the triangle and the shoulder bar follow up. But you kick wide, hide your foot right away. I start to get head pressure, misalign him. I need to get a frame. So I cup his hip, forearm across the thigh. And now I bring my bottom knee towards this hip so I could pull this knee out. And this form is what's going to stop him from following. And I guide my knee across. And like I said, this way, a lot of turning. So two ways to free your foot is either just get him looking the other way. And now with the spine misaligned, you won't have as much control on your leg. Or... You can just start to threaten an Ezekiel. That's his attention changes. Now your foot gets free. What else we got? Uh, so I, I think John Grappler is asking a question about when you get half foot into half guard. Okay. But, but I don't quite understand. He says, can you angle perpendicular to the Della Riva arm arm? And I'm assuming maybe that's Della Riva arm bar. Your near shin is so close to the back of his head. I, I, don't, I, I don't quite understand the question. Yeah, if you can rephrase the question for us, and then uh, we'll revisit it. Yeah. Um, one of the guys asked, do you have any ways of escaping rear naked chokes? Rear naked chokes. Okay. Well, first escape. <laughs> Don't let it get so deep. <laughs> so, trying to go sideways. So, understand the mechanics of the finish is for him to bring his elbows together and down into your chest. So, this is what makes the, my, the choke kick off. So you want to try to expand. So when he starts to contract, you want to expand. So first things first is try to help yourself as much as you can. Fingers in, start to pull. Get your feet together close to your butt. And you're gonna drive into your partner and then start to extend. Now, try to, as you bridge up, start to make your feet wide so you have a little more balance. And as you pull, set up real quick. Don't think about it so much as like you're pulling his arm. You want to think about it like you're doing a pull-up. So you're using your body to pull his arm down. If you try to just pull his arm down, yeah, you're not really doing anything. You try to match strength with strength. But if you think about it like you're actually doing a pull-up, now you're engaging more of your body against his limb. So gets it. I get my grip. I start to arch towards him. I'm looking for balance. And now... Once I'm flat here, is where I start to do my pull-up. Now, the second I start to create space from his arm from my neck, I'm going to start to tilt towards one side and start to kill the angle of his choke. As I do that, I'm going to keep turning towards him, and this is where you're going to make a call. If he's following up towards you, you make a frame to keep him in place. Shrimp out, you have the entry of the legs or retaining guard. So we good. Here. So first things first, grab, get your feet in position. As you drive, start doing that pull-up motion. And this way. Chances are they're already going to start pulling you towards the direction away from the hands for the finish. If I could go towards his hands, that'll put more pressure on his wrist. That'll be ideal. 
But if you fall this way, that's okay. I'm doing my pull-up motion, trying to go as high as I can. If I could go over his head, even better. As I'm tilting towards one side, I'm going to start to pull and start to face him to, to kill the angle of the choke. As I'm turning, if he stays one second behind me staying on the floor, then I'm just going to switch my legs and come towards him. But as you go, he starts coming up. I want to make a frame and start to shrimp away. Keep coming up. You have the option of entering legs or worst case scenario, he's coming up. I just look, yep, come on. I just look to get my guard back and at least keep him in front of me. But the main thing is protect your neck. As you're bridging to get your head over his, doing that pull-up motion. Now we're good, you don't have to check, uh, choke me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? Okay, so, so John fixed his question and we can straighten that out. Okay. Um, <laughs> another John, the John that was asking about the remake of choke said, do you ever go back away from the choking arm, like to the head side? Back away. So basically you're in remake of choke, right? John's right hand is remake of choke. He said you can go to your left. This side, yeah, this is the ideal side. Yeah. So what I was saying is ideally, I would like to pull, arch, and go towards his hands because that's going to put pressure towards his wrist to let go. Now, the main thing is, as I go flat and I'm getting away, most of the time they're going to look to follow up. Now, your priority list goes from the hands to the hips. And I'm looking to create as much space as I can, any way that I can. And if I catch him lacking, then I'm the one that's coming up. But ideally, I like to go towards the hands because... That's where you're going to start to break the grips a little more. But like I said, most of the time when somebody's attacking, if you're in his shoes, you're looking to get him towards the elbow. So it's good to work both sides. All right, he said thank you. That was that, John, J-O-H-N. Okay. John, J-O-N. There we go. Um, back, back to <laughs> the, the all world. Johns of the world. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so his question was from the, the shoulder bar you're calling it. Okay. So go hit the shoulder bar. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, he's basically asking, can you put the right foot under his neck and put the left foot back over his head and do like the real standard arm bar? Ah, uh, okay, okay. So keep in mind, from this position, he's already, without the mechanics of finishing the shoulder bar, he's essentially in the position to start escaping. If I do any extra movement other than finishing from here, he's going to start to escape. So if I, let's say, like go to reposition myself, move however you want. Yeah. He wants that right hand under the head, or right foot under the head for you starters. Yeah. You know the one where you hook? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I'm here. This is keeping him down. If I do this, you know, yeah. The second you create any kind of movement, you're, you're giving him any escape is, any, any escape is somebody creating a little bit of space and adding more space to it. So, if I'm already in the position to finish him right here, then I already took away all the space that I need. The second I do anything to move, yeah. So try to find the most efficient way to put somebody away. And if you have somebody responding to pain, chances are you're that much closer to a finish. Okay, so. Oh, okay, the, uh, oh. the other John. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> back for any, uh, for the scorpion. Tips well, to get rid of it. Tips to get rid of it? Okay, so. Yeah. So, with the scorpion, that's something you have to be aware of as you're entering half guard. So, slide back a little bit. So, anytime I feel that I'm going to get to half guard, unlock it, I'm looking to. Almost like you're going for a head control. Uh, get your half guard. Almost like you're going for head control, I like to cut an angle. So it's almost like I'm locking up a triangle, but I'm just keeping my foot close to my knee. 
because now my foot's way too far for him to lock up a uh, the scorpion. So almost try to give yourself that reminder as you enter half guard. But let's say they got you. So uh, lock up the scorpion. So first things first is you want to make sure they don't get underneath this leg. The second they start to get underneath this, now they're going to be able to stretch you, and you're almost going to most likely have to accept the, the sweep. If you don't, chances are you're going to get injured. So the second I feel that scorpion, I'm looking to get head control and hide this knee by his hip. With my knee tight to his hip and me getting head control, now I'm taking that leg away. So all he's doing essentially is just holding you in place and just trying to find a way to this leg. So you just have to keep that in mind. Now, as far as freeing the leg, there's a few, a few ways to do it. First, I want to misalign it with my head control facing him this way. Now with this leg, I'm looking to do um, like an egg beater motion. So he locks up. I get head control, I get facing this way. This knee always stays by this hip. Because remember, his arm is right there for start to go under. So it follows his hip. Now I switch my hip into lock of the pedal. So I turn, swim, straighten out, and then I hide right away. Another way to deal with it, lock it up. There's also a standing up option. So here, I'm gonna get on my toes. Here, uh, hook my shin. Yeah. And now I'm looking to get my foot flat. Oh, you all right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As you get your foot flat and you start to stand up, actually starts to lock their legs up. So lock up a scorpion again. So here, so lock up your leg here. There we go, and then hook my foot. Yeah. So from here, another option is to flex your foot, go flat, keep him away from you as you start to stand up. And now you almost kind of trap him in place. And then you get to see he wants to uh, disengage his leg because it actually starts to put him in the position where his legs are getting locked up for a submission. But the one I like to go for, for the most is as he locks up, even if he stretches out, yeah. You get head control, you get to see this knee, what they're trying to do is go underneath. So I look to get head control. My knee is by his ribs. I need to keep it by his hip. And now I'm just looking to start to misalign his legs. And then the second I can, bring my heel to my butt, windshield wiper, and hide. Now I sit back on this heel. So all my weight is on my leg and he's not able to go underneath it. So just look to misalign, head control, tilt your hips, and then just do that windshield wiper motion so you can free your leg. But make sure he does not go underneath that knee. The second he does, that's all they're looking for. The second they do, that's when they get what they want. Uh, so got one question, what's your go-to sweep from open guard? My go-to sweep from open guard? Yeah, you're standing and you're just, you know, flattening the back of Oh, okay. This is actually one of my favorites. I actually learned this in that fundamental class. So, always go to fundamental class, even when you're a higher rank. So, from here, I like to go for the push-pull sweep. It's right there all the time. I've even used this in, uh, my MMA fights. The way it's taught is you could get a grip, you get foot on the hips, get the heel grip, and now the far side foot goes behind the knee. I call it push pull sweep because all you're going to do is push and pull. Everything is going to pull but the foot on the hip. So I'm pulling, 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 and I just push. The second you feel them fall, this heel is going to come to your butt. And now, you ride the momentum, pull yourself up. This knee is up in the way so you can't close guard or pull you into any submission. And I like to cut the knee and get myself in a position, in a position to start passing. The, one of the reasons why it's my favorite sweep is because it's not reliant on wrist grips. Especially for MMA, 
sometimes they're already in position to start to swing. You don't really have time to start fishing for grips. So I just cup, my hands here to protect my face, and I just hook. So let's say he starts to pressure to try to do some ground and pound. I protect my face, push pull. The foot that's by the hip, you retract, you come up on that knee, and this knee stays up so they don't pull you in. One last time. So here, I have my feet on the hips. I grab my heel grip, the same side as the heel, foot on the hip. Other foot goes behind the knee, and I'll just pull, pull, push. The second they start to tilt, that's your cue to go. Don't wait for them to hit. As they're falling, you come up. So you also get the perception of speed, but it's actually timing. Anytime somebody looks fast, it's all timing, just knowing when to do it. What did you do so far? I minutes. Oh, nice. So, um, did. I have one other question again from John. Uh, what's your favorite guillotine? And then maybe finish on that one. Okay. So, uh, my favorite guillotine is actually Fox's style. So, the guillotine has become one of my favorites. I like to play between Fox's style and switching to um, the rear naked choke guillotine. So, here I get my grip. Now, the reason I like to play between two is because, especially if the person's staying in place, I get to drive, and if they start, start to tuck, like tuck your chin. Yeah, he starts to fight here. What I could do is push on his shoulder with the back of my hand, and then as I retract, I pull, so stay, stay on your knees. So I push his shoulder, and as I pull this hand back, I'm actually pulling my hand towards my face. And now I have the rear naked choke finish here. So here, ideally what I'm looking to do so I guess I do Fox's style guillotine, where I keep my chin. I'm looking to keep my head towards his hips. I don't want his head, as Fox says, you don't want to see their hair at all, the back of the head. So if we turn, I get the grip. He's loaded up. This elbow, I'm looking to bring it towards my ribs. So I'm always cradle, cradling his head like a football, and that forces your shoulder to go forward. My head is going to be going towards his hips. So now, as I'm, fall, as I'm going into place, you can't see the back of his head at all. I hook his hip, this leg comes over, and I'm almost attached to his neck. Sometimes people won't let you go that far, especially if they know that the guillotine is your go-to. So, in that case, if they're hunkering down, staying heavy, I get my grip. I just like to push. I was stepping on his hair, my bad. <laughs> I like to push his shoulder with the back of my hand. And then as my hand comes back, I'm gonna pull this hand towards my face. And now I have the rear naked choke. So if they're not giving you the chance to get to the angle, you can actually just get a rear naked choke guillotine and finish right there. That being said, we're out of time. Always remember to like, Share, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Looking to keep it growing. And uh, yeah, it's good to support the Silver Fox family, you know? So thank you guys, much appreciation. And although I won't be here to film, I'm still gonna, you know, stay on top of things and help the academy grow. Catch you guys later.